Hello everyone. Today's virtual course is about layering two centrals. The objectives of this course are creating naturally layered centrals by learning first how to mix the porcelain powders, second how to cut back the porcelain to allow integration of both. Third is how to unify the optical properties of different base materials, like even in the case of having two different base materials such as like Emacs on one side and Zirconia on the other side, like our case scenario for today. As you all know that Ivoclar's main point of having different translucencies of Zirconia is to create a correlation between the Zirconia and the Emacs when it comes to the material selection. For instance, if, if you need to combine Emacs for high aesthetic with Zirconia for high strength in the same case, you don't worry anymore about the shade or translucency level match. Because whatever ingot you choose from Emacs, you would find a match from Zirconia Emacs Zircat. Exactly as you see here in our uh, case scenario, two copies. The one on your left side is uh, the Emacs press, uh, and even you see still the leftover of the uh, sprue. And the one on your right side is the Zirconia, the Zerka Zirconia. Both of them are LT, low translucency. So the shade and translucency are very close between both. But we have to use our experience with the porcelain powder to make the final results even closer and that's what we're going to see for the rest of this video as you all know that uh, besides the difference in the reflection index between the two crowns the emacs and the zirconia we also have a big gap in the fluorescence content level uh, Emax Press, the lithium disilicate, has a certain level of fluorescence. Take a look, please. While Zercad, Zirconia, has no fluorescence at all. This is the picture on the right side of the screen. This is the Zirconia, and the left side is the lithium disilicate Emax. Uh, and that's very uh, obvious uh, under black lights. And that's one important reason why Emacs, whether uh, the pressed or the uh, CAD cams, uh, must always be our selection for aesthetic region. Uh, and no zirconia will be will beat it cosmetically, uh, no matter what. Uh, therefore, the best way here to increase the uh, fluorescence. On the zirconia side, on the zirconia crown, is applying a coat of zerliner. Zerliner is the best. Well, the next best material to use is uh, the margin powder. Could be the mar margin powder is one of the uh, highest level of uh, fluorescence. Uh, the margin powder can be sprinkled or layered as a thin shell on. Uh, the zirconia coping. Well, in our case, I sprinkled it on both crowns. That's what you see here. Then uh, I baked both of them on the margin firing program. And here you see the results after firing shown under the black light. So we can see how much we were able to boost the fluorescence level. So if you look at both and compare the results, you see that still the Emacs beats the Zirconia when it comes to the, uh, the fluorescence level. But at least we put some fluorescence on the Zirconia side. And now we're ready to start the build-up. Uh, we will watch this video from uh, this step, uh, which is finalizing the shape and the body of the Dante. Uh, as you see here, no matter what course we're doing, we always pay attention to the morphology and the uh, shade of the natural dentition. Uh, to do this, I always provide a model of the mock-up. Uh, that's what I'm holding now. 
to follow the shape closely and also a photo of the teeth to follow the shape. Uh, that's why I will always be holding this model again in my site, working on this case. Uh, both on, when building the first Dunton layer and uh, when finalizing the last incisor layer. Uh, in, in both, I will be focusing on the morphology. Uh, till this step, 70% of the final size must be built. The second step is the straight cutback and the dynamic dunting. Uh, with our ceramic brush, we do the straight cutback with our ceramic brush. We can shape it sharp by flattening the hair and uh, use it for the ceramic cutback. We, we start with the straight cut back, as I call it, because later we will see the mamolong cut back. That's why I call the straight cut back. So we can recognize the difference between both. Uh, the straight cut back, where we would empty a room and the inside a third from the buckle aspect, as you see, uh, keeping it tapered toward the incisal edge. Uh, in a sense of reducing the thickness of the Dunton in this uh, third. And uh, we also uh, open the uh, mesial and the distal corner completely. And this room uh, then can be filled uh, with a second layer, which is practically uh, called the dynamic Dunton. Uh, why the dynamic dunting? Because uh, it's mixed with another, another powder. And uh, of course, the vertical length is extended again by another 10%. Uh, what's the dynamic dunting? The definition of the dynamic dunting? Dynamic dunting is an individual mixture of dunton with one of the effect powders to dilute the pigments in the uh, dunton and uh, control the value, the brightness. In our case here, in particular, we mix the uh, powder or uh, Dunton, the power Dunton, with uh, transpar neutral. Uh, the, the ratio of the transpar neutral is 60% to 40% power Dunton to make the Dunton more translucent. That's the aim of this dynamic Dunton. Uh, and consequently create smoother transition among layers and yet if you if you noticed i did not place any porcelain from the lingual uh, uh, aspect uh, the wing the lingual aspect i'm, I'm just trying to uh, like correct here a little bit but the lingual aspects uh, would stay till the very uh, uh, end uh, and uh, uh, the lingual aspect is a window for correction, actually. Therefore, I won't close it till I finish layering the entire buck buckle aspect. And now we get to the momolong cutback step. And after we uh, make sure that the moisture contact content is uh, correct so to allow us a, a cut successful cutback that does not fracture or slump, uh, we would use a ceramic brush in the same manner by flattening the hair of the brush into a blade and cutting the incisal edge into mamalos structure. Uh, remember that the bigger the brush size uh, is the better for separating those mamalons fingers, obviously, because uh, it makes a bigger blade. The important question here, uh, uh, is there any rules on the width or proportions of those fingers? Uh, frankly, no, but we uh, tend to believe that there are three momolons in the centrals. And uh, since they started primarily er er erupting uh, as three developmental grooves from the childhood, uh, but with time they deform, uh, they are, but they are likely to stay uh, three uh, fingers or three mammalons. And there are also some ongoing studies on, on the possibility of any correlation between the shape of the tooth and the shape of the mammalon. Uh, but no results yet. 
and some other observations that tend to believe that the distal mammalone is the biggest or the widest, followed by the mesial and then the, uh, the middle mammalone, the smallest. Uh, and also the edge of the distal mammalone is tend to be uh, like round, rounded, while the edge of the mesial mammalone is uh, straightened up. Uh, we also could uh, create uh, secondary mammalone, as you just seen here, uh, in the middle and the mesial mammalone, just in the middle mammalone and mesial mammalone, but not in the distal one. Uh, well, at least what you just seen is one pattern, pattern of how to create uh, mammalones. Now comes the opalescent step where we start filling the opening among uh, these mammalones using uh, uh, the opalescent powder. Uh, starting from one side, could be the distal, then uh, moving to the mesial, then filling in in between uh, from the labial surface. Uh, of course, we extend the length vertically uh, by another 10% using the same powder. Just to remind you that we have uh, four opal effects in our opal, opal effect range. Number one is the light absorbent, uh, which give, gives us uh, a bluish opal scent effect, uh, while number two, three, and four are light reflective uh, with more whitish cloudy effect. That's of course, uh, depends on the, uh, the, the thickness of the layer. And uh, we also have additional uh, two uh, opal effects, one orange and one violet. Maybe in another video, we'll, uh, uh, we'll get to discuss in details how and when to use uh, all, all of them, all, all of the opal effect uh, uh, powders. Um, back to our uh, layering here. Uh, after we finish from the buckle, uh, filling uh, uh, the opal effect one, uh, uh, we turn to the uh, lingual aspect uh, to do the same, and we fill the gaps across the mammalone. Very important not to uh, uh, lose focus on the tooth morphology, and we keep our eyes open on the curvatures of the buildup, and we make sure we are following uh, the morphology uh, precisely. Now we could lower the value in some uh, selective spots and. Uh, increase their absorption of light. Of course, this is optional, uh, but before we need to create uh, a room again, uh, like to apply this absorbent powder. Uh, I could also use my blade to scrape away some of the opalescent powder uh, I got on the last layer, uh, exactly as uh, you see now, and uh, apply this uh, powder in the uh, middle, on the incisal third, in the middle between the uh, mesial and distal uh, sides. Uh, using this uh, sharp tip of my separation blade, uh, but absolutely after I make sure that the ceramic uh, moisture content at this moment is under control. It must be uh, dry enough uh, so when I uh, move my separating tool on the ceramic surface, it won't collapse. Uh, then I go ahead again and moisten it in order to accept uh, uh, the added uh, layer of uh, powder. And now it's time to replace the uh, thickness of powder I uh, uh, removed with a thin film of uh, uh, absorbent powder or uh, value uh, reducing powder, if we can call it uh, that, um, such as what I used here is opal effect violet. Uh, that would give us the uh, optical effect of more depth in the ceramic. Uh, that's very important. And uh, we also could have some external stain on the top. Uh, as you see now, uh, we could add some calcification white stain from uh, uh, Ivo Color Kit in a form of like a brush strikes uh, on the uh, middle third. 
uh, but make sure that the stain is not pulling together in, in one spot, either getting absorbed by the powder uh, underneath it. Therefore, we uh, should condense our ceramic powder before uh, doing the step. This is very important. And here I would like to show you just a picture of the second layer, the incisal layer, uh, which I'm not going to go through it in, in this video. It's just a, a picture. Uh, just to uh, show you that the main focus at this step is uh, the surface uh, morphology because all the uh, layers uh, were already put in the uh, uh, first downtown and intermediate uh, layer. Our uh, final results after the glaze and the manual polishing uh, you can see every powder we put into this layering. Even the white calcification stain is visible in the middle. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this video and found some information to use in your uh, daily lab work. I wanted to highlight some of the topics you uh, requested through this case. Please don't forget to uh, email me or write down here in the comment section. If you have any questions, as usual, looking forward to the next topic. Stay safe and see you next time.